Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's guide is all about tweed. We discuss the origins, what it is, how to wear it, and anything else you want to know about this wonderful fabric. Tweed began as a handwoven fabric which was made on looms. The cloth was rough and thick and coarse, and the colors were earthy because they were inspired by nature. And today, tweed is pretty much the same thing. It's this fabric which is rich in color, which is made out of wool, and it comes in many different shapes and forms, all of which we discuss here. So how did tweed get its name? Some people claim it comes from the River Tweed, which is in Scotland, and supposedly the cloth was first woven in the Tweed Valley. Other people claim tweed is a twist on the Scottish word tweel. Whatever the origins, it's a wonderful fabric. It is known as tweed, and that's what we use today. If you want to learn more about the history and the intricacies of tweed, please check out our full-fledged written guide here. Now, tweed is usually quite heavy and warm, but believe it or not, it used to be the high-performance fabric of its time. The English gentry was quick to adopt tweed as their preferred fabric for golfing, hunting, or fishing on their country estates. It was quite enjoyable, it was warm, and at the time, houses didn't have central heating, so having layers of warming cloth was actually quite desirable. The tweed fabric was also used for specific cuts, such as plus fours that were full and used for hunting or golfing or anything else that was outdoor related. Today, it's rarely used for sporting TVs anymore because it's quite insulating, and even though wool is quite absorbent when it comes to sweat, it's simply too warm for most people. You'll only see it on vintage lovers when they go on a golf course, or maybe for the Tweed Run, which is a bike race specifically dedicated to Tweed. Tweed is named after a multitude of things. It can be a geographical name, it can be named according to the sheep, or it can be named after a certain brand name, such as Super Sax. First, let's look at a tweed that's named after sheep. First of all, it's the Cheviot tweed. Cheviot is a breed of white-faced sheep that were first kept in the Cheviot Hills in Northumberland, near the Scottish border. Generally, it's a larger and rougher type of tweed that's quite coarse to the touch, such as this one. Basically, it's a hard-wearing fabric, and it's not something that you touch that's soft as cashmere. It's quite the opposite. Next up, we have Shetland tweed, which is the jacket I'm wearing here right now. Shetland tweed is the opposite of Cheviot in the sense that it's much softer, it's finer, and it usually has a looser weave. Now, it's hard for you to see, but if you could actually touch the vest, which is made of a coarser Cheviot tweed, and the jacket, which is made of a soft Shetland tweed, it would almost feel like night and day. People like the coarser stuff because it's harder wearing, it's usually heavier and it's quite warm, whereas the soft Shetland tweeds are just comfortable to wear and really great for a sport coat. So whenever you want something soft, look for Shetland tweed from the soft Shetland sheep wool. Now let's discuss geographically named tweeds. First of all, the Donegal tweed. The name of Donegal is derived from the Irish county of Donegal, and the characteristic is that it's a tweed with knobs, as you can see here. Rather than having a plain fabric, you see like orange, red, gray speckles. Sometimes you have pink or green or something very outlandish. But overall, it creates a soft look that's very casual and very elegant from a country point of view. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Donegal tweed, also for overcoats, because it's unique especially when combined with a herringbone pattern. Next up is Saxony tweed. In the Middle Ages, it was forbidden for the Christian areas of Spain to export sheep. Now, in the mid-18th century, that law was relaxed, and so sheep were sent to Saxony, and eventually they had over four million sheep. Of course, there would be fabric out of their wool, and so Saxony tweed became a very popular item. Today, Saxony tweed is defined by a short pile, as you can see here, and so it's usually quite soft. Generally, it's made from a merino wool today, and it's another wonderful sport coat or odd jacket fabric. Certainly, the most well-known tweed today is Harris tweed. It's another geographically named tweed 
which comes from the Isle of Harris. It was first introduced to the English aristocracy in the 1840s by Lady Dunmore. It quickly became very popular in English society, and so in 1909, the first British mark or trademark of its kind was created. It said that only tweed woven in the Outer Hebrides could be called Harris Tweed. This is still the case today, so whenever you see a Harris Tweed label, you know it was woven in the Outer Hebrides. A few years ago, Harris Tweed was close to extinction, but it has made a really good comeback. And if you want to learn more about this wonderful tweed, please check out our in-depth guide here. Harris Tweed usually has a twill weave, and it's a coarser fabric to the touch. Apart from sheep and geography, you also have tweeds that are named after functionality. Gamekeeper tweed is a heavier fabric, usually starting at 700 grams, about 24 ounces. It is made for cold weathers, so it's quite insulating and hard wearing. It really got its name from the people who use it outside all day in cold, harsh conditions. Sporting tweeds or hunting tweeds were developed specifically for hunting and the idea was on the one hand that the colors are chosen so you blend in with your environment. On the other hand, a hunting tweed jacket had like a shoulder patch just like this one so you could easily hold your rifle and it wouldn't wear out your shoulder fabric so quickly. Hunting tweed jackets also had little features like a throat latch that allowed you to button up your jacket in case it got really windy or cold and you needed to protect yourself. Another really interesting tweed is a so-called thornproof tweed. It is made of two-ply wool yarns which are supposed to be woven tightly and as a consequence if you go through a thorn it may poke through but it is then self-repairing. It's a wonderful fabric if you're out and hunting or if you have to walk through brush and maybe thorns because the little punctures won't hurt the fabric and it will look like new even after a long day out. Super Sex is a Saxony tweed that used to be made by Bladen. It had been discontinued for a while. I think it's back now, though I really prefer the old stuff because it has a special color depth and wonderful patterns. Next up, let's talk about tweed patterns. The most basic tweed is a plain twill weave tweed as you can see here. It has these ridges that are quite wide. They can be a little finer, but this is pretty typical for a plain twill tweed. Another option is a so-called overcheck twill, which is what I'm wearing here right now. It's still a twill weave. It's not as pronounced as the one you can see here, but it has this overcheck. I really like this tweed because it has a green color and it's very nature driven. And with a rust, it's perfect for an autumn jacket. Tweed jackets are always single breasted they're never double breasted because they're a sport coat and the double layer would have been too warm. One of the most popular and basic tweed patterns is herringbone. Herringbone is named that way because it's supposed to resemble fish bones. Basically, herringbone is a twill weave. So it's the same weave you can see here, but the rows are adjusted to go up and down right next to each other, giving you this herringbone pattern. Apart from a plain herringbone jacket, you can sometimes also find herringbones with an overplaid or an overcheck. Adding a check to a herringbone pattern can make the entire look quite different and it's usually a jacket that people have once they have two or three other tweed jackets already in their wardrobe. Another popular tweed pattern that's good for solids or some maybe even Donegal is the so-called barley corn. It's called that way because upon closer inspection, it resembles a kernel of barley. Striped tweeds incorporate vertical lines to create a just different look. Oftentimes they're in contrasting colors, sometimes also in alternating colors. Striped tweeds are not overly popular and instead you'll find a lot more checked tweeds. Check patterns can be manifold. You can have really like a micro check as you can see here with very small checks or you can have something like this jacket with houndstooth and a broad bold over check in like orange and red. If you get a houndstooth in a brown and beige tone with a larger scale, you can combine it easily with beige tones, browns, stone, greens and any other kind of casual nature inspired color. 
a houndstooth resembles the back teeth of dogs and hence it, it got the name. Hunters also came to realize that it can be quite effective as camouflage if the tones are chosen close to nature. So now that you know all the different kinds of tweed, the question remains, how do you actually wear a tweed? First of all, it's not just for professors or old stodgy gentlemen, it can be worn by anybody. Because of its weight and the warmth, it's particularly well suited for fall winter outfits because otherwise you simply overheat. If you live in a climate that's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius or below, a tweed coat is a wonderful addition to your wardrobe. If you're not sure about the tweed jacket, you can always go with alternative tweed items. For example, I'm wearing a Irish tweed tie here right now paired with a tweed vest. It's a fantastic investment because even if you just invest in one tweed vest, you can combine it with a multitude of jackets and always create a casual, relaxed outfit. They're also quite warm and can even be worn on their own. If you're new to tweed and you're not quite sure what to invest in, go with a mid-brown color. For example, the jacket I'm wearing here right now is mid to dark brown, it has some Donegal flex, and it's definitely different from any kind of other suit coat you'll have that's made of flannel or worsteds. It pairs with lots of items, including corduroys, chinos, or any other kinds of slacks, and it gives this casual, relaxed feel. If you don't want to go with a solid tone, you can go with something like this microcheck pattern or a small houndstooth. Of course, herringbone also looks really well as a first one. For a second jacket, you may want to invest in a blue tweed because it's also versatile. But personally, I also think you can be a little more daring with colors and go with greens or burgundies, mustard yellows, or different kinds of brown. Because it's a tweed coat after all, and it's meant to be different. Now that you know the basics of what tweed to wear and what's out there, it's important to know when not to wear tweed. If you're in a traditional white collar environment, tweed is not the fabric to wear. It's simply too casual and it's also too warm in a heated office. Moreover, it's not suited for any kind of evening event or cocktail party because it's more of a country fabric and it's not primarily a city fabric. Of course, today you can wear tweed in a city, it's no problem, especially when it's cold outside, but just stay away from formal events, especially evening events. You might have noticed in all the outfits with the different tweed jackets, I didn't change my shirt. And it's because this kind of creamy yellow orange color works with almost any kind of tweed coat. You should definitely avoid white shirts because they don't go well with a casual character, but this tone is perfect for tweed. For even more information about tweed, please check out our full-fledged guide here. And if you enjoyed this video, sign up to our newsletter so you get videos and articles like this right to your inbox.